Oh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this meeting of the Eastern Area Planning Committee. I'm Graham Pask, Chairman of the Committee. Other members of the committee present are Councillors Alan Law, Tony Linden, Royce Longton on Zoom, uh, Ross McKinnon, Alan Macro, Jeff Mays, Richard Somner and Keith Woodhams. The following officers are also in attendance to advise and support the meeting. Uh, Bob Dre, Team Leader of Development Control, Michael Butler, Principal Planning Officer, who will be introducing, introducing item two. Uh, Emma Nutchie, Principal Planning Officer, who will be uh, uh, item one. Gareth Dowding, Principal Engineer for Traffic and Road Safety on Zoom. Kim Ma, Legal Services to keep me on the straight and narrow. And Jess Bayliss from Democratic Services to take the minutes and to ensure the help ensure the smooth running of the meeting. And Stephen Chard is our host. Now, before we start proceedings, I'd like to explain for the members of the benefit of members of the public who may be watching. Uh, tonight's meeting is being held both over Zoom with councillors present and COVID compliant in this council chamber. I can confirm that those pres present in the chamber are sitting socially distanced and are thus permitted to remove their face masks while seated. Representation, uh, sorry, representatives making presentation to the committee have been encouraged to do so remotely via Zoom, but those in attendance in person are equally welcome. We have none tonight. The meeting was being live streamed on YouTube, so members of the public are able to follow proceedings. Please can I ask everyone present in the meeting to make sure they have the microphones placed in front of them as much as possible and to make sure that they speak directly into it. I, we have done the tests. Uh, if we hear the evacuation alarm this evening, we must leave the building immediately. Please proceed via the safe emergency exit route, which will be shown to us by the trained officers present. Please follow any instructions given by the officers. And the assembly point is the Newbury Station multi-storey car park. Anyone requiring assistance down the stairs will be assisted accordingly by the trained officers. Um, do members have any questions about the way in which this meeting will be conducted before we proceed? Good. Uh, before I go on to the agenda, anyone who has tuned in uh, to hear our deliberations on Jackaway's Cottage, South Hampstead, uh, this item is withdrawn from this meeting for consideration at a future meeting. Um, so we turn to the agenda. Item one, uh, Jess, do we have any apologies for absence? Uh, no apologies received, Chairman. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, members, minutes of the um, meeting that, uh, just bear with me one second. Uh, 17th of November, 2021. Uh, I understand councillor somner you have a comment to make i do chairman thank you um declarations of interest um i declared an interest at the start of the meeting um which hasn't been recorded in that section um but if if you if members turn to page 10 you will note that that was further backed up farther and following a conversation with the legal advice um to uh, then although i could take a part in the debate not to take part in any vote um so i would like the declarations of interest to to reflect that chairman please I'm sure that is done members Sorry, um, declarations of interest, item three, uh, Councillor Woodhams, I believe. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I'm declaring interest on the land south of Lowway application as I campaigned against the development. I have therefore predetermined the application and will leave the room for the duration of the debate. Right, thank you very much. Uh, are there any other declarations of interest? I see no hands. I take it there are none. Uh, in that case, item four, the first item under consideration, application uh, number 18, 
stroke 00964 land south of Lower Way in Thatcham. And I will ask uh, our planning officer, Emma Nutchie, to introduce the report. Emma. Thank you, Chairman. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so the first item on the agenda is an application at, at Lower Way in Thatcham. It's for the erection of 91 residential dwellings together with associated infrastructure and landscaping. The application is recommended for approval um, subject to planning conditions. And there is an update, some information within the update um, with regards to um, that recommendation, which I will, will come to at the end, towards the end of my presentation. Um, so um, a site visit was undertaken um, last Wednesday and um, members will recall um, this site plan being displayed on site, um, which was uh, part of our um, site visit. Um, we've also got some street scene elevations um, on the screen at the moment, just to give you an indication of the um, sort of design of the scheme. Um, it is a full application, so we have all details um, before us this evening um, to determine the application. Um, the scheme will deliver 40% um, affordable housing, um, and it comprises of 20 flats and 71 houses, which are a mix of two, three and four bed properties, um, sort of reflecting the need for family homes within the area and the local housing mix. Access from the site is from Lower Way itself. Um, the, during the site visit, there were some questions raised with regards to the retention of the boundary hedge along Lower Way. Um, the, the hedge and the fence line are to be retained. And since the site visit, um, an amendment has been sought um, to the scheme um, to remove the gardens for plots one to 10 from the, uh, to remove the hedge from the gardens of those plots, sorry, one to 10. So the hedge is now outside of the residential curtilage of all dwellings um, and will be retained. The access, uh, the site is served by a single access onto Lower Way. Um, and again, um, the hedge can be retained as visibility displays are without outside of that. Um, on the screen at the moment, you can see um, a view from lower, looking along Lower Way, um, and the access is near where, where that car is parked. Um, along Lower Way, you've also got um, the cycle route number five, um, which links Thatcham Town Centre or the, the railway station to um, Newbury Town Centre. Um, you'll see on site, uh, this is where we stood um, during the site visit. Um, so in front of you, you can see a slight a walked path, which is the footpath that um, crosses the site um, and looking south onto the southern boundary um, of the site. And then we have a view here also from the public right of way looking southwestwards. Um, the area here will become the public open space and the area looking towards the southeast corner is where the new housing will be located. The um, principle of development on the site is established under policy um, HSA 5 of the housing site allocations plan. The site is allocated for approximately 85 homes um, and this is a scheme for 91. Um, so the uh, development is slightly larger than, than the allocation by approximately 5%. However, um, the detailed design and layout at this stage demonstrate that the site can accommodate this um, level of housing without adverse harm. To the eastern boundary of the site is um, an, an existing footpath, which the um, proposals will link into. Um, the scheme seeks to provide um, an area of open space to the, to the west 
And within that, we have um, some informal pathways that connect to um, the Thatcham Discovery Centre to the south. And we also can see the, um, the formal footpath being retained, which links into the wider network. So we don't have any um, objections from statutory consultees. However, we do have some um, extra conditions or some amendments to the conditions. Um, condition two uh, seeks um, a, a small change to the location plan that has been amended um, just with a, a simple revision. So there is a slight condition change there with regards to condition two um, and due to the changes to the position of the boundary treatment for some of those plots which now remove the hedge from the curtilage we've got a revised wording for the boundary treatment condition um, and an additional condition to cover that change as well um, We've also got um, a slightly revised wording for condition 32, which related to the drainage um, verification report. It just includes a little bit more detail in terms of what the applicant is required to submit in order to demonstrate that the um, drainage strategy has been successfully implemented. Um, it re now requires some photographic records and some CCTV surveys as part of that condition. A request has also been made, um, and this isn't reported um, within the update sheet, so I'm delivering this verbally now, but a request has been made by highways to attach a condition relating to the submission of further um, plans to demonstrate that the roads and footpath design and vehicle parking will be designed to an adoptable standard. And they're asking for details of engineering works um, and specifications. Planning officers do not consider that this um, condition is necessary because it duplicates other legislation and a level of detail is provided um, with the application that's considered sufficient. The recommendation therefore is for approval subject to the additional conditions and amended condition within this update and also subject to delegating to officers to consider this request for a new highways condition and if it's necessary, impose any relevant conditions um, should that be seen to be necessary. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Emma. Um, members, as always, if you have questions, if you could make a note of them, please. Uh, and I will ask you to ask our officer um, for answers uh, if they're not answered by those who wish to speak, uh, which leads us first of all to um, Thatcham um, Town Council, Councillor Simon Pike, who is appearing on Zoom. Perhaps, uh, Councillor Pike, you could uh, tell us when you can hear us. I'm just going to bring uh, oh. Councillor Pike in, into the room. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, just for your information, my uh... My, my computer has uh, just turned itself off. I'm hoping to re-establish connection. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Pike is, is with us now, Chairman. All right, Councillor Pike, can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can. Can you hear me? Uh, I cannot hear you. No, nope, sorry, I just brushed the wrong switch at the wrong time. I do apologise. Right. Welcome to the meeting. Uh, you have up to five minutes to represent the views of Thatcham Town Council. Uh, when you've, um, do you want any timekeeping assistance? Uh, yes, please. Right. What would you like? Halfway? A minute to go? One minute to go, please. A minute to go. Um, when you have finished, um, if you would still uh, remain there, please, for any questions that members yeah. of the committee may have. Your time starts when you speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thatcham Town Council objected to this application when it was first submitted in 2018. That objection still stands. In addition, the detailed application does not comply with Works Best Berkshire Policies HSA 5 for this site or CS15 for energy efficiency. Policy CS15 states that from 2016, residential development shall be zero carbon in line with stated government aspirations. Last December, the government published the Building Regulations, etc. Amendment England Regulations 2021, which deliver a 30% improvement on 2013 standards. 
These regulations are not yet in force, but that is, an, a, 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 this is a legal commitment which is far stronger than a stated aspiration. The report pack states that the applicant has committed to a 20% reduction in CO2 emissions. This is therefore insufficient to comply with policy CS15 taken with the new regulations. I would also note that the energy statement, uh, which was only uh, made available yesterday, contains an untrue statement on the viability of heat pumps. Uh, as West Berkshire Council has declared a climate emergency, we expect it to apply this critical policy in full. Policy HSA 5 requires a landscape buffer to the D Discovery Centre and states that the LVIA will inform the nature and extent of the landscape buffer to the south of the site. The LVIA states that this landscape buffer should include areas of woodland and be planted to a minimum width of 15 metres. It should include both tree and shrub species to provide a multi-level vegetation screen to the proposed development. The plans do show a minimum separation of 15 metres between the boundary and properties. However, trees and shrubs would only be planted along the boundary with the remainder being grass and footpile and the footpaths, and in many places, driveways also intrude into this width. The planted width of the landscape buffer therefore falls far short of the recommendations of the LVIA, and the report pack does not explain why they have been disregarded. The landscape buffer therefore does not comply with policy HSA 5. On cycling, HSA 5 states that pedestrian and cycle linkages will be expected through the site and linking to the surrounding area. As you know, National Cycle Route NC4 passes along Lower Way. Members will have seen on the site visit that the off-road route ends abruptly at the eastern end of the site. Both Thatcham Town Council and the Mid and West Berkshire Local Access Forum have proposed an alternative cycle route along the southern edge of the development. The report pack does not address these comments as the relevant paragraphs only relate to pedestrians. The Department for Transport Local Transport note, LTN 1-20, recommends a minimum width for a cycle route of three metres with an absolute minimum of two metres at constraint. But the proposed paths on the site are only 1.5 metres wide. They are therefore too narrow to be considered cycle routes and the application therefore does not comply with the requirement in HSA 5 for pedestrian and cycle linkages. Uh, we're grateful for the uh, change on the, uh, on the uh, application relating to the hedge, hedgerows uh, adjoining Lower Way, by the way. But the hedgerow on the east of the site is shown as, in the plans as being largely ornamental rather than native, and there is no planting of a native shrub buffer adjacent to it, both of which are recommended in the LVIA. So if the committee agrees that the landscape buffer is not in accordance with policy HSA 5, it should refuse the application. Otherwise, the council should specify the following conditions. Condition 34 should be amended to require a 30% reduction in carbon emissions in line with the current legislation and the policy. One minute remaining. Condi condition 13 should be modified or a new condition added that an agreed specification of the paths must be suitable for cycles. And finally, the planting of the hedgerow and adjacent buffer on the eastern edge of the site should be agreed by the council. And I assume that those conditions would have the, the normal caveats relating to permitted development as, as associated with them. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Councillor Pike. Members, any questions for Councillor Pike? I'm looking for Zoom hands, ideally, but uh, scanning for actual ones. Um, Councillor Pike, you've raised some points which I... Oh, Councillor Mays, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Pike, I noted you talked about the footpath on the eastern edge of the site. I also understand there's a services uh, grass strip in that area. Can you tell me what's in that grass strip? Um, not specifically. I, I know that there is, uh, there is um, some uh, Thames water pipes somewhere in that area, but I don't know. I can't comment on their location relative to the... To, to the, the, the the track, which is the, the the footpath, so I can't comment on their exact position and, and what I, I was only reading what was in the in the policies. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Any other questions? All right, Councillor Pike, you've raised some interesting issues, which I will ask uh, our planning officer to address uh, before we enter debate. They always have the final word. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. 
Could I ask then that um, Stephen, Miss Derber, uh, one of the objectors, who is also on Zoom, be brought in? Uh, yep, she's oh. uh, in the meeting room. Chairman. She is there. Miss Derber, can you hear us? Uh, Miss Derber, we cannot hear you. Can you hear us? We can't see you either. Uh, I don't. Ah, oh, there, there you, you are. There you are. And we can <laughs> hear you. Can you hear us all right? I can now. It's all right. I didn't have control previously. So. <laughs> You're in control now. Hopefully, yes. Good. Delighted. Right, Miss Derber, you have up to five minutes. Can I assist you with any timekeeping, like a minute to go? or? Um, hopefully, I have got this... Um, down to a T if I can manage to do it. <laughs> well, well uh, okay, well, we hope you do. Uh, please remain there uh, when you have finished for any questions that members of the committee may have. And your time starts now. Good evening. I am, the, I am representing the numerous residents that have previously commented on this planning application since 2018. As you can understand, we are not happy with the field becoming a housing estate. We will lose the beautiful view across the field and be affected by the increased vehicle, cycle and foot traffic the development will bring, as well as by the increased strain on local facilities like access to GPs, nurseries and schools. We fully support all the points that the Town Council have just put to you about carbon emissions, landscape buffers around the site, pedestrian and cycle link linkages, hedging, and hope that conditions will be amended or created to cover their points. There are several issues that will still concern us that we are not convinced have been adequately considered. We ask that the committee instruct the council officers to look again at them before a final decision on the details of this planning application is made. Firstly, with reference to the highway's final document, it states the automatic traffic count was conducted in 2016, which was modelled up to account for future traffic growth. It cannot, however, take into account the subsequent extensive effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, which renders the data obsolete. Wet Spark the Council have put in an extra lane on the final 30 metres of low way, acknowledges that the traffic volume has increased substantially. And now you want to add a further traffic from 91 homes, when at peak times there is already a continuous stream with no brakes, making it dangerous entering, entering and exiting our drives. There is the added concern that traffic will massively increase on Painsdown Road into Bourne Road, if people want to exit Lower Way quickly, using it as a rat run between Lower Way and the A4. Can the committee request a new traffic survey that would then inform the local and national authorities, enabling them to implement measures that will make living on and using Lower Way and the connecting road system safer, bearable, perhaps considering a 20 mile hour speed limit for everyone's safety before the application is decided? I'm sure you are aware northeast of the site, although does not show an exit, has no hedge, so will swiftly become an exit due to the proximity of the public footpaths, the closest exit to the town, bus stop and national cycle route, as well as the footpath opposite leads to another estate with children's playground and walking cycling route to the A4 Bath Road. The national cycle route ends abruptly at this point and with a drop curb. It is the obvious place to cross. It gives us great concern there is no Toucan Crossing when it has six possible exits for the new residents, trying to cross low way safely. Although this may be a highway matter, we ask that the council review this again before a decision is made and possibly ask for a contribution from section 106. The residents would also like a condition added from the West Barks Council Housing Allocation Policy, GS1, that would ensure none of the hedges will be wrapped. Also that the developers will take note of the reminder in the information section on the breeding birds in the West Barks Council EAPC report. Looking at the site plan revision new on the southern boundary fence, it shows uh, we can it is shown uh, the southern boundary fence is shown, but we cannot find any other reference to it. It is an old, broken, rusty barbed wire fence, and there is concern for the safety of people using the public footpath next to it. 
Can you look into the ownership and how the awful state of the fence is going to be addressed before the application is decided? Residents that have lived in the area for several years will remember the installation of a large sewage pipe to the south of the field. One minute remaining. Whoa. When it was first connected, it was a considerable leakage and the ground became saturated with sewage. Although it's been rectified, we would like the committee to provide assurance that there is no longer contamination or leakage before any decisions are made. Another concern regards the assurance that the council will not allow further housing to be built to the west of the public footpath running north-south in several years time when Thatcham again is asked to provide houses. Looking through the elevation drawings, it becomes apparent that plots 24 and 25 have a three-storey house at the closest and highest point, directly facing it's onto Low Way. Could the committee review the location of the tallest buildings, including plot one to floor, and ensure that any positions, sorry, ensure they are positioned so they do not intrude onto the ex existing houses on Low Way? Could I, could I ask you to make your conclusions, please, that your time is technically up. I'll give you five or ten seconds. Finally, on a more light note, we hope the road names used on this estate will reflect its rural position on the edge of town. Would you consider naming the roads after native British tree species, please? I don't know if that's our remit. We will take advice on that. Uh, thank you very much. Members, looking for questions for Ms Derber? And again, Ms. Derby, you've raised some interesting points, which I will ask. Uh, I see Councillor Somner, but I, so I'll say what I was going to say in a second. <laughs> Councillor Somner has a question. Thank you, Chairman, um, and thank you, Ms. Derby. I, I just wanted some clarity, please, on, on what your position was with regards to traffic impact and the pandemic. Um, there was, there was a lot of information in that section. I just didn't quite note it all in the right order. And if you could it's okay, do that, it's fine. Um, the point really is that um, the national pandemic, the world global pandemic, has altered um, the way that everybody is now working, their leisure, and in fact, how they interact um, with towns and obtaining goods. And as everybody knows, you now do everything on the web and there is a lot more traffic. So this cannot be, and was never ever thought of in 2016. Therefore, um, the effect of COVID on traffic, the extra deliveries, um, and the way people are more local, um, being told to work from home, so there's a lot more local um, traffic going around. It cannot be, even when uh, the software was used to um, put in up 2027, 20, I think it was, um, the future growth, then it couldn't have taken the COVID effect, just couldn't have been taken into account. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other members, before I say what I was going to say, any questions? In that case, I thank you, Ms. Derber. Uh, again, you've raised some interesting points, which I will ask our planning officer to cover off before we enter debate. So thank you indeed. Um, we now, we have no uh, members of the public in support Therefore, I turn to um, the, the applicant or the agent, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Laura Jackson. I see you're there. Can you hear us? Oh. Yes, I can hear you. And can you hear her? Oh, good, good. We hear you <laughs> and see you perfectly. Uh, same rules. Uh, you have up to five minutes. Can I assist you with any timekeeping? Uh, yes, if you could give me a minute's notice, that would be great. I will do that with pleasure. Um, and please remain there for any questions that members may have afterwards. I will do. Okay, thank you. Good evening, councillors, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. My name is Laura Jackson, and I am a Senior Planning Manager for Persimmon Homes, Thames Valley, the applicant. I have been working closely with your officers to ensure that our development proposals at Lower Way Thatcham are acceptable in plan and design terms. The site represents an extremely important development opportunity to Persimmon Homes, and as such, we welcome your officer's recommendation for approval. 
The proposed development has been the subject of an extremely detailed discussion process with officers and statutory consultees over a period of four years to ensure that it complies with all relevant planning policy requirements and is an appropriate form of development for the site. The merits of the proposed development have been clearly set out in the submitted application documentation and your officers' reports. However, I would like to reiterate the following points. The principle of, re of residential development on this site is established by its allocation under policy HSA 5 of the Adopted Housing and Site Allocations SPD, which does form part of your adopted local plan. The development therefore represents a sustainable development of an allocated site and should be considered favourably in accordance with the policies of the MPPF and the Council's adopted local plan. It will make an important contribution towards housing in the borough in a location that has been determined to be both sustainable and suitable for development. Extensive work has been undertaken to understand the hydrology of the area with the groundwater catchment area established and agreed with Natural England. The development site constitutes only 2% of the catchment area and as such Natural England has confirmed they are satisfied no hydrological impacts will arise as a result of the development and in particular the habitat of the um, SAC to the rear will not be negatively impacted. A carefully considered layout and design approach has been proposed to ensure that principles of good design have been adhered to. As such the proposed development is both sympathetic to its site and the surrounding area. There are no adverse immunity issues that, were, that would result as a consequence of the proposed development and it has been demonstrated that the existing road network is able to accommodate the additional traffic flows that would result. A detailed technical submission has been made in relation to engineering matters and we have provided your drainage officer with a highly detailed and comprehensive design for surface water drainage. Only a few outstanding issues remain which can easily be resolved and discharged through the condition that has been suggested. Further Thames Water have confirmed they have capacity to accommodate the foul water generated by the development. The scheme has also been designed to ensure compliance with established highway standards. Much of the new road layout will be built to adoptable standards and offered for adoption under a section 38 agreement. Remaining areas of highway, such as the private driveway areas, will be privately managed by a management company that will be established for the development. However, we have sought to ensure that established and recognised technical standards have been adhered to in the design of the entire road layout. We therefore do not consider the con condition suggested by highways officers is justified and other technical processes should not, be unne should not unnecessarily burden planning consents. The new newly established footpath Thatcham 34 has been accommodated within the proposed development and condition, uh, connections to existing pedestrian routes and the nature discovery center to the rear are provided within the proposed layout. The proposals would not result in significant harm to protected or other species and any effects arising would be adequately mitigated for. In accordance with national policy, a significant biodiversity net gain can be achieved. 14.88% in terms of habitats and 83.68% for hedgerows. We're also ensuring that, he that hedgehogs, birds, bats and other mammals can move safely and easily across the site. In terms of energy efficiency, we are fully compliant with your adopted policy as detailed clearly in your officer's report. One minute important remaining. Important landscape features are retained as part of the proposals including the hedgerow to the, um, to the northern boundary, the eastern boundary and the existing trees along the south and the required 15 metre buffer has been retained and the scheme has been designed with our landscape consultants full acknowledgement. The, newly public, the new public open space will be retained in perpetuity and will be secured through a section 106 agreement. So in conclusion, I believe it has been demonstrated through the very detailed technical submission that is before you that an appropriate layout for the site can be achieved and that the development will relate well to the existing uh, development of Thatcham. Um, it is therefore the, considered that the proposed development is appropriate to the site and its surroundings. And I do urge you to support your officer's recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Law. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chairman. I'd just like to ask... Okay. Uh, a question of clarification, I possibly didn't hear it correctly. Did I hear a challenge to one of the conditions about traffic and highways? Could you clarify that for me, please? 
Uh, no, I'm not challenging the condition. Um, as, as your planning officer stated at the beginning, the condition that has been recommended by, or, well, suggested by highway officers does not form part of the recommendation because officers do not consider it necessary. Um, it is not necessary to tie other set, uh, technical processes such as Section 38 or 278 processes to the planning system. It is not a matter for the planning department to consider. Okay, I, I think, uh, Councillor Law, uh, uh, you're welcome to come back on that. No, no, I, but, ju I was uh, just saying, I, 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 I'm still not 100% clear well, what we, was made. Maybe, our, maybe officers could help clarify. Officers that. will certainly help before we enter debate, absolutely. Councillor Mays. Thank you, Chairman. I have two questions. One is regarding the um, unadopted road uh, surfaces in the northern part of the um, estate. There are two which I think are unadoptable, but uh, I think that they're supplying a very large number of houses and it would be better if they were adopted so to the uh, uh, refuse vehicles can enter those two areas. The other point I would like to raise is the um, on the water, surface water, uh, into the pond. You said, I think, that there are two or three aspects which have not yet been concluded with the, the uh, water engineers in West Berkshire. Um, could you tell me what those two points are, or three points are, ones that have not been agreed? Thank you. Okay, so first of all, turning to, I, th I believe you are talking about the private drives, the little cul-de-sacs along correct. the northern boundary of the site. There are actually three and they're not interconnected. Um, they are a key part of the design of the site to, to create different character areas and to ensure that, um, you know, an, an appropriate character is provided for the setting. Um, all the bin um, refuse pulling distances, et cetera, et cetera, are adhered to in the design. Um, and there is a... a, a um, there is a uh, refuse um, drawing that has been submitted with the plan submission, which demonstrates that. I do think that making that an adopted singular road will take and detract somewhat from what the layout seeks to achieve. Um, and, and the layout has been fully discussed and agreed with officers. And uh, the fact that we're on a revision U is a, is a suggestion of the process that has been gone through to get to the layout that we have. Um, in terms of drainage, um, I'll put it out there, I am not um, a highway, uh, sorry, a drainage engineer. We have done an extensive um, consultation process with your, with your drainage officers in the LLFA. The issues that, that remain are not in principle issues. They are small issues, uh, for example, locations of manholes and a few questions about long-term management and maintenance, all of which can be and are being processed um, with our consultant team. They are really matters of detailed technical design, which again is not really for the planning process to fully understand due to their complexities. There are various standards that have to be, have to be adhered to, and that is the process that we are going through. But the principles of the drainage scheme, how it works and how it functions and how the layout works have all been agreed and established with your drainage officers. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor McKinnon. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Chairman, and uh, good evening, Miss Jackson. Uh, thanks for your uh, presentation, and I hope you're well. Uh, just one point of clarification on something you said on the energy efficiency. I, th I think I'm quoting you correctly uh, when you said that the application is fully compliant with the energy efficiency requirements. Um, I'm just wondering how that tallies up. If you, if you check 7.3, paragraph 7.3 of the report on page 34, just the final sentence of that, uh, it says that while not fully compliant with CS15, other environmental and ecological enhancements, and I, I might be thinking about a different policy, but can you just clarify that apparent contradiction, please? Well, so I was talking about energy efficiency, and I believe we are in accordance with policy um, CS15. We are showing a, a 10% carbon reduction plus other uplifts in terms of um, the fabric and how, and how buildings are, are, are built um, and that is all as per the energy and sustainability statement that has gone into your offices. Um, I'm not sure what that particular sentence referred to. I think you might have to refer that back to, to the planning officer for her clarification on that, I'm afraid. Not I, I will do, uh, Ms Jackson. I mean, or, or in that paragraph, um, I'm reading a reduction in carbon emissions of 22.3%, yeah. more, more than 10% yeah. which you referred to there. Yeah. But I, I know I said 20%, but yeah. yeah 22 but, but I think you did say fully compliant with the policy as per your planning officer's report. I, and I think 
the planning officer's report does not, in fact, make that conclusion based on the final sentence of 7.3. I will bring it up with officers, but I think it's worth pointing out. Right. Well, thank you very much. Another one for the, uh, the officers short. To Councillor Linden. Yeah, um, I'm not 100% sure if I'm applicable, so the chairman may uh, ask me uh, to withdraw um, the comment. Um, we are a, uh, we're not a borough, by the way, we're a unitary district council. But um, there are uh, questions, um, I don't know if you can give an answer to that or we'll ask the officers about fire hydrant provision by the Royal Berkshire Fire and Rescue Service and uh, also no development between the water main, but I expect the officers will answer that question. Well, uh, I, I think it is one for officers, but if you can shed any light on it, Ms Jackson, uh, yeah, this I, is your opportunity. From memory, I believe we have a condition about fire hydrants, so we will be providing that information, but, you know, the site is serviced by, by water, so that will be achievable. Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to um, with your second question. We do have a water main running along the southern boundary of the site and those easements have been accommodated in the proposed development. Um, and oh, it's within five uh, metres of the water main, so I just... Yeah, we are well, well within. So, so the water main runs uh, tight along, it's shown on the technical drawings that have been submitted, tight along the southern boundary and those easements have been fully accounted for, which is why you have that uh, 15 metre buffer, which is also recommended from a landscape point of view. Okay, thank you. Any other members with questions? Councillor Lords, has a legacy hand. Oh, oh. Thank you for reminding us. Uh, again, right, Miss Jackson, uh, officers will, I'm sure, pick up any points that uh, have been asked that you uh, uh, were perhaps a little outside your brief. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I now turn to um, the ward member who has not declared an interest, Councillor Jeff Brooks. Good evening, Councillor Brooks. Good evening, Chairman. Can you hear me? We hear you. You obviously hear us. Um, you know the score. You have up to five minutes. Uh, may I suggest, if you're still talking after four, I give you a minute to go? Uh, mine will be a minute, sir. A minute? Go on, then. But please stay there for any questions after you've finished. Thank you. You'll never have heard me speak so briefly, Chairman. Um, but it, I will start by just reminding the, us of the fact that you and I, Chairman, did discuss this at the site visit. Ms. Derber spoke very, very well in terms of the local residents' disquiet. There was a major campaign to avoid this being in DPD, and the residents are very distressed and disappointed that this planning application that ended up in the DPD and this planning application now coming forward. But I wonder if we could just dispel through your committee that this site will be built out, that this planning application is a way of doing that. If it did not find favour, other planning applications or an adapted one would come forward. I just wanted clarity for local residents to understand the position the council is now in and that this site will be uh, will be built out however distressing for the residents so that was my major point really to, to, to for the avoidance of doubt in case any residents felt that this could be avoided this development of any kind could be uh, avoided and, and then i'll end on a more positive note uh, that i'm very grateful for the hedges not being in the in any of the gardens that hedge will do an effective job on the lower way road of masking the site and with a well-maintained fence uh, that'll be a good barrier to this development and assist uh, those residents in coming to terms with this development so i was pleased to see that i uh, hear that earlier tonight and that's pretty much all uh, you know councillor pike and mr Durban made some very good points i'll be interested to see how the officers pick those up but chairman if you could reiterate and agree with me that this is a site for development and will so be. Uh, and this is uh, the planning app we're considering tonight. Thank you, Chairman. All right, thank you. And, and indeed a valid point, well made, Councillor Brooks. Uh, you made it to me before the site visit and I'm grateful to you. Uh, I think members are aware this is uh, a site that is in our adopted local plan. Uh, members, do anyone, uh, do any of you have members for the war, uh, questions for the ward member even? 
You can let him off lightly. Now's your chance. We are letting off light. Maybe, oh, he'll, be, oh, oh. maybe he'll be more brief in future, Chair. He was very brief, Chair, but I was very impressed, yeah. yeah. Right, thank you, Councillor Brooks. Um, members, uh, questions for officers. A lot of interesting points were made. Um, do you wish to ask, add anything specifically first, or do you wish to hear the answers our officer has for the points already raised and then come back and ask further questions. I'm in your hands. Councillor McKinnon. Yeah, thanks, Chairman. Uh, yes, so just really to ask um, uh, the officers about the point I just raised to, to Mr. Jackson about the compliance, whether in part or in full with CS15. Uh, what, what's the verdict on that, please? Okay, thank you. Um, policy um, CS15, um, seeks with regards to residential development from 2016 for um, renewable energies on site and to deliver a zero carbon scheme. Um, as has been identified within the report, um, the application is accompanied by an energy statement and it will sees the applicant committing to delivering at least a 20% reduction in carbon dioxide um, emissions compared to the standard um, set by building regulations. So the application doesn't fully comply with the requirement of policy CS15 um, against the way it's been assessed. Um, however, um, the applicant recognises the policy and does seek to deliver um, some renewables on site. Um, and that reduction in carbon dioxide will be delivered one way um, is through solar panels on the dwellings. And we have secured um, the details of the position and design of those panels by a condition. It's also um, sort of important from a planning perspective when thinking about a decision to be mindful of um, the application in terms it has been pending for um, a number of years. Um, and due, our interpretation of this policy has changed um, more recently. Our discussions um, during the application have focused on um, delivering other environmental benefits um, and you'll note from within the report that um, there is some financial contributions towards ecological improvements off-site. Um, so in, while the proposal isn't strictly um, compliant with CS15, um, a balanced view has been taken looking at the other um, environmental ecological benefits that are being delivered um, and a balanced conclusion has been reached on that, on that matter. Thanks very much. A very comprehensive answer. I just did one more, Chairman, if yeah, that's okay. A very quick please. one. I have, I have two other councillors as well wishing to ask questions. Just so one. let us all ask questions of Ms. Nachi. Uh, and, and then if, if we have missed anything, I'll ask her to, to, to make a further comment before we enter debate. So, Councillor McKinnon. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, uh, Councillor Pike. Uh, mentioned some concern about the width of cycle lanes and he said that they were too narrow really to, to count, uh, I think was his, his overall uh, position. Uh, is he right, is my question to you. The, the, um, at the moment, there is currently um, uh, one definitive footpath through the site um, and that extends um, from the north from Lower Way to the south and then along the southern boundary. And I think we saw that during the site visit. Um, I'm aware that there are other, are other um, well-used sort of routes across the site. However, they don't form um, definitive public rights of way. Um, the proposal will um, provide a number of different sort of linkages through the site and actually formalise um, those currently informal connections with the footpaths to the east and west and with the nature reserve to the south. So it's delivering a network of um, official and more informal pedestrian routes. The um, use of a formal public right of way can be, they can be used by cycles if the landowner permits. Um, they may not be three metres wide as required, but they will be sort of surfaced routes um, going through the site. It is also um, important to be mindful that there is an existing cycle path along the southern edge of Lower Way 
um, which is not affected by the development and obviously will continue um, to provide that um, connection between Newbury and Thatcham. Does that answer your question, Councillor McKinnon, for this? All right, Councillor Sommer. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wonder if we could bring Mr Dowding in, please, and, and I suspect Councillor Law's point is also along those lines, so I'll go with my question B and allow Councillor Law to have what I suspect is his question A. Um, I, I raised for clarification the issue of the pandemic and the impact on traffic, um, and understandably, and quite rightly, I don't disagree with it at all, increased deliveries was was cited as as, as being a definite change of the pandemic. My view, however, is that the, the impact that the pandemic has had also counters that increase by virtue of the fact that people are not all going back to offices as they were previously. Um, so with that in mind and the application of the software that highways officers use, um, I'd just like some clarity and confirmation, please, from Mr Dowding, if we can, Chairman. Well, he's here and he is our expert in highways matters. So, Mr Dowding, you heard the question, I'm sure. I did. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Yes. Uh, it is very interesting that actually during the pandemic, we carried out a series of traffic counts and surveys uh, to get an understanding of what actually the pandemic was doing to traffic flows and, in fact, traffic speeds. It was interesting that during the pandemic, we saw a 35% reduction in traffic volume. Unfortunately, we saw a slight increase in traffic speeds, but that's a different matter. Since the pandemic has been uh, spreading out, we've still been monitoring the, the traffic. We are still not even up to the traffic levels that we had prior to the pandemic. Uh, so we are slightly short in percentage wise of, of traffic volumes. The other knock and effect of the pandemic is that it's altered the AM and PM peak hours. Uh, the peaks are completely different to what they used to be. Uh, the peaks aren't so severe uh, early in the morning or in the evening in the same way. Traffic appears to be more spread out during the day uh, and appears to be a lot lighter than what it was at certain peaks prior to the pandemic. I think that uh, you, you do notice that certainly uh, in the early evenings that uh, the traffic isn't necessarily as busy as it used to be. We have found that the majority of the traffic is reduced because people are working from home or have changed their work home lifestyle. Uh, and that, that's very uh, obvious in, in our traffic surveys. So although the pandemic did change traffic, I'm afraid it hasn't changed the traffic to an effect that would affect our overall recommendation for traffic terms uh, coming out of this site. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, well, I can certainly vouch. It took me considerably less time to come into this office this evening than it used to uh, in, in pre-pandemic times um, by a significant margin. Um, Councillor Law. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, I was a follow-up with a point. I was grateful to Councillor Brooks for pointing out that this the development of this site in principle has already been agreed. Uh, and... Uh, in the, uh, the DPD back in whatever it was, 2015, 16, HSA 5. What, uh, my questions around that, however, what we did, agree, I think we got some echoes here. What we did agree in 2015 for when the DPD was 85 houses. And here we've got 91. So my question of officers is, uh, how significant did they, do they regard this getting six extra shirts into the suitcase? Um, and uh, what weight did they give to it? Are, are we in excess baggage? <laughs> Ms. Nutchie, over to you. Thank you. Um, so the, the policy sets out an approximate figure, um, which has been calculated by looking at the constraints of the site um, at a, a sort of high level um, the proposal that we now have before us is a detailed planning application. So we have all that detail um, available to us in order to make um, an assessment of all the constraints and technical issues. And it's been demonstrated that the um, site can accommodate the additional six units um, with, without any harm to, to those um, 
sort of technical points. Um, so for, for that reason, um, the increase is not considered to be um, a, an issue. Thank you very much. Uh, no doubt you'll make a point in debate, Councillor, or if you feel you need to. Uh, Councillor Macro. Thank you, Mr Chairman. A couple of things. First of all, going uh, on to the, the energy consumption or um, zero carbon side of things, uh, in Section 7.3, it says that uh, the, um, in the development they aim to reduce carbon emissions by 22.3 percent below building control standards it's my understanding that building control standards are changing and they're already um being changed to reduce carbon emissions by I can't, i've forgotten the exact number but it's over 20 percent <laughs> is this so does this mean we get an additional 22 percent on top of that 20 odd percent or is this 22.3% on top of what the standards say today? And I also have another question about the, uh, um, the HR to the east, where we're well, told, sorry. I'll ask that as well. Um, we're told that uh, the HR to the eastern boundary can't be reinforced because of services, but to my mind, there's two sides to a H. If you, can't, if you can't reinforce it on one side, surely you can reinforce it on the other. An interesting point, Ms. Nachi. Thank you. Um, the um, emissions um, in relation to it's the is in relation to building regulations um, 2013. So it, it's the assessment is based against the current current regulations. Um, if that helps clarify that point, and it's specified within the condition as well for clarity. In terms of the hedge. Um, as has been identified, there, there is services along the eastern boundary which have impacted on the type of landscaping that can be um, secured. The um, existing hedge, obviously a native hedge, is part of the current landscaping that frames the site and it is to be retained um, at an approximate height of, of three metres. Um, as I say, it's an existing part of the established boundary treatment. Um, there isn't a uh, scope to kind of plant on the opposite side because it, it defines the site boundary. So you'd be looking at planting um, outside the application sites um, and within a, a public right of way. So there would be issues um, with that, unfortunately. Uh, is that, uh, so can I just clarify answer? both of those answers? On, on the building regulations, it sounds like this 22.3% uh, figure it is completely useless because come I believe June the the condition of the building control regulation is going to be changed to uh, require carbon saving beyond that and they won't be putting uh, foundations in the ground before June that would be thought um, on so on the issue of the um, the reinforcement of the HRO I mean they're saying that the service is run down on the application side of the HRO that sounds a bit strange, but there we are. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I mean, if officers, I, I'm going to keep going with questions. You've had an answer to that one, Councillor Macro. Uh, and if officers wish to make a further comment before we start, enter debate uh, about the, the the issue of uh, CO2 emissions, etc., uh, then then they can do. So, uh, Councillor Mays. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Ms. Nachi, the boundary on the eastern edge we've just been talking about, that I think says it has to be down to grass because it, the uh, services need access and that would prevent um, solid planting in that area. Can you answer the question I asked earlier? What services go down that grass strip on the eastern net boundary? of the site. Ms. Dutchie, can you attempt to guide us further on this eastern boundary? Um, the, the services run um, within the application site. Um, I'm afraid, I can't remember if they are water or electric. I, 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 I don't know, but the, the, the principle is that um, because access is required, it does limit the type of landscaping yeah, you could okay. have along there. 
Yeah, I understand that. Okay, thank you. The other point I still want to raise is the um, effluent going into the pool at the western end of the site. I still don't understand where the water is going to go after it's been in the pool and has uh, possibly accumulated not only carbon, but nitrogen from the site. Where does that uh, pond discharge to? It wasn't answered on site and it wasn't answered tonight so far. Right, well, can you assist us, Mr. Archer? I hope it isn't effluent as such. Uh, I, I hope it's water runoff, but uh, I, I leave that to your very capable answer, answering, Miss Natchi. Um, yes, it's, um, it is runoff water um, and it will collect in the infiltration basin within the open space and then it's um, discharged um, to a stream on the western edge of the site. Um, there's an outfall pipe that takes it um, off um, to be discharged. Where does it go to? Um, it, into the stream at the western edge which then <laughs> um, kind of travels south. So it goes towards the uh, nature reserve. It does, yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I see Councillor Somner has his hand up again, I believe. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Just to, to evidence, if it were needed, why I shouldn't be a clairvoyant, because um, Councillor Law didn't ask the question that I thought he would. <laughs> um, so again, to Mr. Dowden, please. Um, we've heard conversation. Uh, with regards to the additional condition and the non-acceptance of that, I'd, I'd like um, I'd like a view, a, a, some clarity from from both officers, if I may, Chairman. Thank you. I, I know Mr. Dre has an answer up his sleeve, but perhaps Mr. Dowding first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the reason for us as a highway authority asking for this additional condition is to ensure that the authority ends up with a road which is built to a doctoral standard that the footways are built to a doctoral standard and that the whole site is built to a doctoral standard. Unfortunately, until such time that a developer signs a Section 38 or even part of a 278 agreement for a site, there's no guarantee that the developer will actually construct a road to a doctoral standard and offer it to adoption. Uh, as there's no mechanism to insist on the 38 being signed as part of a condition, uh, we are asking for a condition to be added which would allow us to ensure that the highway design is to adoptable standards and that even if we don't have it offered to us at the end of the construction, at least residents on that estate will be living on a road which is adoptable standard and could be adopted in the future if the residents so wished. Uh, it also permits the refuse trucks to access the site uh, safely in terms of the fact that they're not worried that their vehicles will damage a surface which isn't quite up to standard for their vehicles. It's purely for that reason that we wish this, this condition to be added. And uh, we, we do fully understand that it's, uh, it's an unusual request and that it, it's, you know, our planning colleagues have um, questioned it, its, its use. Uh, and therefore we, we are quite pleased and, and happy to support the idea that uh, it's dedicated to officers for uh, discussion if this uh, application was to find approval at the end of the evening. Perhaps Mr Dre, if you could just add the, the planning officer perspective on that. Yes, Chairman, um, I completely understand um, Highway's concerns and accept them. It's when we're looking at the, um, the, kit, the test for applying a condition, um, in this instance, we don't consider it's necessary because we think there's other legislation that covers this matter. I would just stress that obviously the, the whole, the detailed scheme before you, the plans you're looking at and to approve tonight has obviously been consulted upon and no objections have been raised. We're looking at detail which we consider to be non-material in planning respects. Um, but obviously we would, because this has been raised, we'd rather have that conversation with our highways colleagues so they're satisfied as well. We are content that it's not a fundamental issue in that respect. So what we're asking is that if you do approve tonight, you delegate to officers to resolve this issue um, between us and if necessary, apply a condition. Our current view is that a condition is not necessary, but we'd like to hear this conversation out and settle it. Thank you both. That's very helpful. 
It is indeed. I'm looking for any other hands. I see none. Ms. Nutchi, before we enter debate, which we're about to do, uh, are there any further comments or um, that you wish to bring to our attention uh, based on any presentations or anything else you have heard? Um, I, I think um, most of the points I've noted have been picked up um, in questions to myself. The only extra one would be with, just with regards to the southern boundary um, and the planting buffer. Um, the boundary um, along the south is well established by trees and the proposals do seek additional um, planting to infill any gaps um, and to provide a screening. The LVIA that accompanies the application is based on an assessment of the scheme that's been presented um, and the planting, while it's not a belt of planting, it provides um, a, in, in terms of its depth, it provides um, a continual um, kind of edge around the development to frame it. And um, it is considered sufficient to um, filter views of the site. I would also add that the layout itself um, has been designed to um, reflect the sensitivity of views from the south um, along the southern boundary. There isn't a frontage of development like you see along Lower Way and facing Lower Way. The properties are more spread out um, with gardens backing onto gardens. So you've got very distinctive separation between the built form um, to break up views. And also the taller buildings are located further within the middle of the site. Um, with the lower buildings towards the edge. So there is um, a sort of a design led approach there in order to again, um, mitigate any impact on longer views. I think that's all, thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Mr. Dre, before we enter the debate, yeah. anything else to add? Thank you, Chairman. I just also wanted to just reassure um, members on Councillor May's point about the, um, where the, the, not the effluent, surface water discharging into the stream. Um, the vast majority of this, the negotiations on this application, it's obviously a very sensitive ecological area with the land to the south. And um, it's been the negotiations with Natural England on these kind of matters that have um, been taken up all that, that time. So that has been looked at and agreed with by the relevant consultees. Uh, that's very helpful of you, thank you. Uh, Council Law, is it a question or are you starting debate? You want to start the debate? I'm, I was just trying to get ahead of the game and start in the debate. Well, someone's got to, so uh, over to you. Well, you're ready for that, aren't you? I am. Okay, thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, well, let me, first of all, I want to congratulate the officers. This is a very comprehensive, very good report. And uh, the site visit was, 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 was well managed and very informative. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I just want to reiterate in the notes uh, again, what Councillor Brooks said, and I think the applicant made the point as well, the, we're not here to discuss the principle of development. That's already been established. Um, I, I have got concerns. I raised the question about uh, the, the extra houses. Uh, in this case, the extra houses aren't so, aren't so you know, sufficient. It's only, excuse my analogy, only six more shirts into the suitcases. We, we have, as you know, from some developers seen the suitcases almost double in size. Uh, which is totally unacceptable, uh, and I think uh, the uh, the officer's answer uh, was 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 quite comprehensive and satisfactory as far as I'm concerned. And that's the only probably the downside. Uh, I mean, we're really here tonight to look at the the nuts and bolts and the details of of the application. Uh, and again, uh, I was very appreciative of the fact that uh, uh, between our site visit and tonight, uh, the applicant has listened to some of the comments that were made at the site visit and has removed so, the hedges from those houses outside the curtilages. Uh, and that, uh, that to me, it just demonstrates again the, 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 the relationship and the comprehensive work that's all been done on both sides of, the, uh, of this application. Um, they, my, uh, I, I'm very relaxed about, uh, about this and I, I'm quite happy to, uh, if, if no one else wants to do it, make a proposal um, to, uh, to accept the, uh, the, the, uh, the officer's recommendation. I will have one caveat in that. You note the officer's recommendation is in two parts. And the second part is, if we can't get a proper S106 agreement, we're gonna refuse planning. 
uh, we refuse the application. And the key thing for me in the in the uh, S106 is that we've already had a heads of our heads of agreement say 37 affordable uh, houses. Uh, and again, the, you know our, our history. Uh, the developers, when they get their permission, the next thing that seems to happen is they go into viability statements and uh, assessments and uh, try to take that number down. Uh, and I would just urge the the officers, both the planning officers and the housing officers, please do not move an inch on this. You've got, you, you will hopefully tonight have the authority to reject if you can't get a proper S106. So I'm happy to move and propose the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Law. I, I will never foreshorten debate, but does that find a seconder? If someone could indicate by hand. The Councillor McKinnon, I see. Thank you. And you were next to speak anyway, so I'll come to you. Yes, I'm happy to second that. Um, I mean, I understand where the local residents are coming from. You know, I would, if I was a resident near this development, I dare say I would feel the same way. But, but as Councillor Brooks and Law have mentioned, we're, we're not here to debate the principle of development that has been done. Um, other, otherwise, it seems to be a, a good application. You know, parking standards are met. Uh, highways have identified no significant issues. The biodiversity again, gains are welcome. The flooding risk of the site is deemed very low. And there's two drainage conditions in there supporting that. Uh, the energy efficiency issue I, I raised earlier on. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not zero carbon, but the energy efficiency gains are welcome. And I would say really that no application is perfect, but on balance, this one appears to merit approval. Thank you very much. Councillor Macra. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I was going to uh, actually ask uh, Councillor Books a, a question, but decided uh, a statement might be better. He, he didn't blow his own trumpet <laughs> <laughs> um, because he did campaign very heavily against the site being included in the local plan, I'll call it, uh, and they also spoke about it in the, in, in the debate, but so, spoke against it in the debate when, when it was actually uh, adopted. Uh, so uh, that's one thing. Um, I'm very disappointed about this uh, energy efficiency issue. Um, we're told in, in the report about this 22.3% below building control standards, but no, but I'm sure this is meaningless, as I said, because the building control standards themselves are going to require energy savings in excess of that. Uh, so I'm, I'm very disappointed at that, and I think this might actually turn me against the scheme, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Well, thank you, Councillor Macker. We did explore that in some depth in the questioning. Uh, Mr Dowding, your hand is up. Um, is, is this to assist us in debate, uh, or is it a new point? Uh, no, thank, thank you, Mr Chair. I was just going to say, if you are minded to approve, and I wanted to get this in before it got a bit carried away, uh, I just wanted to check whether or not you were going to include the delegation uh, to talk about the highway condition, because uh, that hasn't been mentioned, and also whether or not uh, we could uh, ask for additional heads of terms of the 106, which was to, to enter into a section uh, into a section 38 agreement. That's all I was going to say, Mr. Chairman, before you got too deeply into your uh, discussion in your debate. I, I hope I'm not about to be carried away, but Councillor Law, are you happy to uh, subsume that into your proposal? I'm, I, I'm, I'm very happy. The members are happy. Uh, well, Councillor McKinnon, the seconder, I would ask, are you happy for that to be included? Before? I am, Chairman. Right, thank you. Councillor Mays, next. Sorry, thank you, Chairman. Oh, two points. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Councillor Mays. Uh, two points. One, I noted in the text that uh, Thames Water have said they can't provide more than the water, the potable water, for the 50% of the site. If it's 50% is built out, it would have to be uh, presumably delayed until they can provide more water and more pipe work into the area. And the other point I wanted to raise is on the uh, the northern boundary. You said that the hedge has now been taken out of the adjacent properties within the um, boundary of the housing area. Who is going to maintain the hedge and the fence in that case? Well, we are in debate, not questions. Well, but okay. I will, in that they are valid questions, Councillor Mays, I will ask uh, Ms Nutchie if she can uh, uh, give you the answers to them. Apologies, yeah, thank you. Vic, could you clarify the question? Sorry. 
Sorry? It was with regards to maintenance of the hedge. Well, maintenance of the hedge is the first one, yes. Um, well, there will be um, a management company um, set up to manage the areas of open space around the site. So about the northern boundary? The, yes. So the repair the north- of the fence and the hedge? Yes, so um, it's all outside of residential curtilage and yes. private ownership, so therefore it will be managed by a management company. Okay. And on the Thames water aspect? Um, we do have some conditions relating to um, the need for surveys and connections to be done prior to commencement. And I understand the applicant has already discussed um, some aspects with Thames Water. So they can build more than 50% of the houses or not? Um, how, bear with me one moment. I'll just find the condition. So yeah, the, the, the trigger in the condition is that there should be no occupation beyond the 50th dwelling until confirmation is provided. Um, so there is work that needs to be done to demonstrate um, compliance with the remaining part of the condition. Um, but I do understand that those discussions are um, quite advanced with Thames Water, um, but we weren't able to remove the condition at this stage because um, I, I'm waiting for something final from Thames Water to be submitted. But it's um, it's something that the applicant is working with Thames Water on at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. So, so effectively, sorry, just building on that just very slightly, you are conditioning something to ensure it happens as a, a statutory body. They must anyway. Is that broadly right? Um, yes. So, yes. Yeah. I like a, a simple answer. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Councillor Somner. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just wanted to echo some of the, the, the views that have already been made, really, to the amount of work that's gone into this. Um, over a number of years, the principle has been established. Um, I, of course, we understand um, local residents' views towards developments going on. It would be um, silly to say that we didn't understand, but I think um, I think the work that's gone into this and the, and the level of detail in the conditions uh, with with the additional that, that is just going in there now, um, for me means that there is a, a a good level of control over over building this out um, to the standards that will will actually bring some benefit to the area for people trying to move into that area. Chairman, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Councillor Linden. Yes, thanks, Chairman. Uh, apologies, I couldn't get to the site because it was on uh, council business through the fire authority uh, on a training course in Coventry at the time. Uh, I uh, share uh, Councillor Somner's views on this and uh, I'll be supporting the application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor McKinnon, is that a new hand? It is a new hand, uh, Chairman. It's actually a point of order. And I know that sometimes councillors raise points of order just to, to have a bit of a say, and they're really fa- fake points of order, but I hope you find that this is a, a, a genuine one. Um, obviously, we in, in planning have to be very careful about how the process is followed, and rightly so, given the, the quasi-judicial nature of the proceedings here. And we have very clear regulations on when um, supporters, objectors, parish councils get to have their say to influence the members of this committee. And this isn't a criticism of Councillor Pike or Ms. Darber, but members will have seen contributions in the chat function in Zoom during the course of our debate here. And I just wonder if we need to be, um, let me still look at it after the meeting about how such contributions can be limited, because I don't think they're proper. I understand why they're doing it. They, they spoke very well uh, when they did, but I think we need to, to avoid that sort of thing. Uh, the matter is already in hand, Councillor McKinnon, and uh, discussions will take place after the meeting, but thank you for raising it. Right, members, uh, I have a proposal that has been said. Sec- ah, well, and I see no more hands, but as always, I get hand over to our officers for any points of clarification they may seek. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify um, uh, the the proposal and what we're recommending just so members are entirely clear um if you go with so the, the proposal is officer recommendation uh for approval as per the report and the agenda and then i just want to be clear what we're adding verbally um it is to delegate to officers to resolve the request from highways to impose a condition 
um, I want to be clear that we're not proposing to amend the heads of terms on the section 106, but I'm satisfied that what highways are after can be resolved by condition if that is what we resolve, we determine. Just to be clear, it's not amendment to the 106. <laughs> so yeah, just um, so to delegate to officers to resolve that issue and if necessary, impose a condition. And so Thank law, you. yeah, this just be just make me a, m a minor clarification of how we go about things. The the uh, the proposal was to add an extra heading into the 106. That's what uh, Mr. Goddard uh, made, and that's what I agreed to. Uh, why can that not happen? And and if it can't happen, can it be achieved by any other method? We, we don't think it's necessary in planning terms, and I think we can deal with it by condition if it is necessary. If you can deal with it by condition, that's fine with me. Sorry, before I go to the vote, uh, gentlemen, uh, I do have Councillor Longton at home, and I invite him to give an indicative vote if he so wishes. Councillor Longton. Uh, I see no response. Um, in that case, uh, members, I would ask if you, uh, for those in favour, could you raise your hands visibly in front of the camera so we can see it on screen, please. Those in favour, please show. Thank you. And, and I, th I think that's unanimous, isn't it? Uh, no, well, again, oh, sorry, uh, and against? I beg your pardon, Councillor Macro. I wasn't going to miss you out, I promise. Uh, so, members, that the application is approved, subject to everything that you have heard about. Uh, members, thank you. Uh, we My move... vote was also in favour. Oh, thank you, Councillor Longton. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, we move then to item two, application number 21, so, uh, stroke 02012, land at West, West Lodge, Basildon. Um, Mr. Butler, please, to present. Uh, welcome back, Councillor Woodhams. Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah good. Um, this application is for a replacement dwelling in the countryside. The address is land at West Lodge, uh, Basildon, although part of the site is actually in Streetly Parish as well. And perhaps you could bring up the next slide, please, Bob, for the um, location plan. Should be useful. Please. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, for those of you on the site visit, you'll obviously be familiar with it. Uh, it's a large site, it's over four hectares. It's in the A O N B, and it overlooks the River Thames to the uh, northeast. In any event, uh, the recommendation sur summary is that officers are recommending to the committee that conditional permission be granted, as on page 51 of the agenda. And the reason for the committee determination is because the local ward member called the application to committee because this is a particularly sensitive landscape and uh, officers would certainly agree with that. And debate about the size and proportionality of the proposed replacement dwelling. <clears throat> so if it turns page 52 of the agenda, as I say, the application is for a replacement dwelling if you could bring up the elevations, please, Bob. Not of the existing, but of, oh, that's it, of the proposed elevations of the new dwelling. Just so the members are clear, uh, the application site is situated well outside any defined settlement boundary, and it's clearly very obviously within the North Wessex Downs A and B. It's an extremely sensitive area because it's just within... Uh, well, the nationally famous, almost world famous Goring Gap between the Chilterns and the North Wessex Downs A and Bs. And to the south of the site is the listed Basildon Grotto Estate, which is also extremely sensitive, as I'm sure you're aware. The original application, as you'll see from the um, location plan originally, was a very large site. Um, this is an important, and I'm stressing this, see. Uh, the applicant appeared to believe this was their bona fide residential curtilage. 
that is certainly <clears throat> not the case in the planning authority's view and i'll come on to that point a little later for procedural issues in terms of consultations coming to page 53 of the agenda basil basildon parish council have no objections to the proposal we consulted goring on thames because of those of you on the site visit uh, although this is in South Oxfordshire, um, the property, if it's permitted, will be, or as existing, is uh, clearly viewable, if I can put it that way, from across the uh, county boundary. And they have no strong views on this application either. Some of you may recall that this application was deferred from the December committee um, in order that we got a consultation response from Streetly Parish Council in South Oxfordshire and indeed the River Thames Society. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't had any to date, so there is nothing to report on that. The Highway Authority is recommending conditional permission, as is the Council Ecologist, and turning over to the next page. Um, all of the uh, consultees you'll see there, and I won't go through them in any detail, I'm sure you read the report, have raised no objections apart from Berkshire CPRE, who object on the grounds that this new dwelling will be far more visually imposing than the existing dwelling, and so will harm the important Goring Gap, which I mentioned before. If you could just scroll down to some of the um, photographs at the bottom, please, Bob, of the presentation for those members who um, weren't able to achieve it. This is the view looking east from the house across the River Thames into South Oxfordshire, and you'll see it is really quite a stunning view, even on a rather dull day. Just so members are clear, uh, the boathouse here, which is in the red line, uh, is proposed to be demolished should this application be approved, which is obviously of some visual benefit on the, Thames, the River Thames boundary there. Go on to the next slide, please, Bob. This is the view of the existing dwelling from a lower drive point, and you'll see that, um, being rather polite about it, the elevations of the existing dwelling are rather poor, to say the least. Next slide, please. This is the view looking west up the slope from the edge of the River Thames. Again, uh, rather poor elevations. And just for clarity, the proposed replacement dwelling will be at a much lower level, well, much lower level. It'll actually be adjacent to this boundary here, but because it's a steep gradient, it will be at a much lower level than the existing dwelling. So although close to, to the Thames in the local landscape, it will have less of a visual impact in the officer's view. Next slide, please. <laughs> Again, a view up the slope of the dwelling. Next slide, please. This is probably, or perhaps a more important view from us across the Thames, uh, looking up towards the west on the definitive rights of way, which we, those of you attending the site visit saw this view. That is probably the um, crucial view in officers' um, mind that you should take into account in whether this application is approved or not in terms of the scale, proportionality, design and elevations of the replacement dwelling. So I'll just speak um, briefly to the um, report, page 56. The principle of the development is certainly accepted because it's a one-for-one -one replacement of an existing dwelling in the countryside, so there's no question about that. And for the reasons set out in the report, uh, the relevant policy is C7 and the HSADP, HSADPD, and the report goes through those in some detail and concludes that the criteria in that policy are met by this application. Moving on to the design, landscape, character and visual impact, which I've alluded to already, officers consider that the proposed elevation or treatment of the new dwelling is although simple, it is attractive in its sym symmetry and simplicity. It is well conceived and is of a classic Neo-Georgian style. 
and is certainly a significant improvement in our view over the existing dwelling which has very little uh, of merit. The curtilage always also needs to be acceptable and if you could bring up the location plan with the green line please Bob thank you just so members are clear if you approve this application and the conditions noted on the agenda sheet are agreed the revised residential curtilage will be the green line only and that is important because any permitted development rights which would accrue would only be available within that curtilage although because it is an extremely sensitive landscape we are strongly recommending that um, all residential uh, permitted development rights in the GPDO are restricted uh, if this application is approved so the planning authority can retain control over that curtilage. The second matter is footprint location. Uh, I think, hope you can see my cursor. The existing dwelling is here. So normally when we look to replacement dwellings the footprint should be identical. In this case I think there is merit in allowing a footprint location slightly to the north um, east, which it is, because it is at a much lower level and there'll be far less impact on the street scene from the A road adjacent. The third principal matter, and I think this is possibly the most important matter for the committee to consider, is that of proportionality in relation to the massing and form and scale of the overall dwelling. And I'll just stress, <coughs> excuse me, these percentage increases, which are quite significant. Paragraph 612 refers the volume increase is over a quarter, 27%, which is not massive, but the footprint increase is 60%. And I think this is one of the reasons why perhaps uh, without the, the original officer to this application delegated refusal to an identical application, about a year ago. But uh, as mentioned in the report, officers can take different views and in the light of additional information which the applicant has submitted, for example, um, a comprehensive landscape and visual impact assessment, we consider, and I stress it's on balance, that although that 60% increase is significant, it's the way that the design makes, if I can put it more efficient use of that floor space, that actually reduces the impact. And you'll see from the, the red line here, uh, the red shaded area, that's the um, elevations of the existing dwelling. So the, the new dwelling is not actually particularly different. With respect to heritage aspects, this is important because the grotto to the south, which I'm sure you're familiar with, um, does lie um, fairly nearby. The council's conservation officer considers that if this development were to proceed, it would not harm the setting of the grotto. And indeed, it could be argued it could improve the setting. And finally, officers uh, almost finally have had regard to the West Berkshire landscape character assessment of 2019 and consider that um, in terms of the aims of that assessment, uh, the impact will be neutral. In terms of amenity there's no impact at all in terms of local residential amenity because this is uh, an isolated dwelling. In terms of high highways uh, the traffic generation is the same. I'll just draw your attention to the update sheet <coughs> which unfortunately I've lost a copy of. I'll ask him if I can borrow it. Thanks everyone. Thank you. <coughs> Within the um, main report, it was mentioned that a possible um, condition would be applied to improve visibility to the north of the existing access. Uh, but the highways officer has come back and said, although this would obviously be a good thing if possible, um, because traffic generation is not increased by definition, and the sight lines um, cannot be improved, it would not be a reasonable condition. Finally, there was some comment uh, about trees on the application site being felled, which is true pr prior to this application being submitted. They were not protected trees. 
uh, and it was within the right of the applicant to fell those trees should they wish to do so. There is then a section on archaeology. Uh, the archaeologist is not um, objecting to the application. I've mentioned permitted development on page 60. And therefore, to conclude in terms of planning balance and conclusion, uh, officers consider that the new dwelling is of a superior design and set at a lower level in the landscape. And therefore, on balance, it does meet the tests of policy C7 and ADPP5. And we are accordingly recommending conditional permission. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Uh, we have no parish representative wishing to speak, nor, nor objectors, nor supporters. We do have the applicant agent, Mr. Miller. Uh, Mr. Miller, I think you're with us. Can you hear us? We can see you. Uh, yes, I can hear you, Chairman. And we can hear you. Uh, now, Mr. Miller, you have up to five minutes to make your points. Uh, I normally would give you, a, if, if you're still talking after four, uh, a warning of a minute to go. But please remain there after you have finished for any questions members may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening, members. My name is Matthew Miller, and I'm a chartered planner speaking on behalf of the applicant, Mrs. Julie Rees. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the planning officer for the informative presentation and the proactive work undertaken to reach a recommendation for approval. Uh, this application constitutes a resubmission of a previous refusal for a placement dwelling. Uh, since this refusal, we have worked hard to revise the scheme to address the matters concerned. Namely, the proposed development has been reduced in volume and bulk, and as you have seen from the comparison plan submitted, it is now a proportionate replacement to the existing built form. As mentioned in the officer's report, we have also provided various supporting technical reports to address the previous refusal reasons. While there has been some debate as to whether the existing boathouse should have been included within the volume of the replacement bulk uh, built form, even when not including the boathouse, the proposal is not disproportionate in terms of bulk and massing and includes a notable reduction of hard standing with subsequent prominent increase in soft landscaping. The proposed dwelling is presented as a very high quality and bespoke design and one that it will complement its surroundings, particularly in comparison to the existing dwelling. The existing dwelling has limited design merit, particularly with the presence of corrugated roof highly visible from the A329 to the south. The improved appearance, combined with its setback from the A329, is therefore considered to result in an improved relationship to the AOMB. On this note, while members who attended the site visit will have seen the site from viewpoints across the river, it is considered that the viewpoint from the A329 is also critical. Despite being a busy road, it experiences a high amount of footfall as well as cyclists, and therefore has a significant influence on how one views the OMB as a public vantage point. The proposal would undoubtedly improve the attractiveness of the view from this vantage point, given the comparative design and setback. This setback combined with the site levels and the existing wall would mean that the proposal would have very limited visibility. Yeah. Further relevant point, the views from across the river have been observed in the site visit during winter. In summer months, with planting in bloom, there will be significant screening to the proposal from this viewpoint. Notwithstanding the fact that in any case, the proposal would result in a positive character impact. While the CPRE have objected to the proposal on visual harm, it has therefore been demonstrated that the dwelling would not be visually imposing to any harmful extent. As members on the site visit will have also seen, the site is located on a downward slope towards the river. This changing site level has been factored into the submission through the provision of detailed landscape, tree and construction management information to be further supplemented by condition. Whilst I do not necessarily consider the existing residential curtilage to cover the entirety of the plot, it is certainly my professional view that the proposed curtilage constitutes a reduction from the existing situation. This offers a further benefit in respect of preventing harm to the countryside setting. No objection has been raised from residents or from neighbouring parish councils, including those within South Oxfordshire and as minuted by Streetly Parish Council. A support comment has been received from a neighbour, again considering the proposal as an overall visual improvement to the existing. The proposal would also provide a more energy efficient and sustainable dwelling in comparison to the existing, 
by accommodating modern methods of construction compared to the aged existing dwelling. With regard to highway safety, this is a replacement dwelling with the same number of bedrooms proposed and with adequate parking and access arrangements. One the minute access remaining. Point itself, the access point itself, the same as existing. Construction traffic along the busy A329 will be re regulated via management plans. In terms of residential amenity, there are significant separation distances to neighbouring dwellings. Uh, as you would have heard, matters including flooding, ecology and archaeology have all been addressed, factoring in the vicinity of the development to the river, and we are in agreement to the conditions recommended to be imposed. In conclusion, the application fully accords with national and local planning policies as a wholly sustainable development, one that protects the integrity and intrinsic character and beauty of both the AOMB and the countryside location. Consequently, it is respectfully requested that permission be granted, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Right, thank you, Mr. Miller. Me members, I'm looking for hands going up for any questions. Ah, oh, Councillor Law. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Miller, thank you for a comprehensive presentation. Just one point that uh, I was hearing for the first time, I'd like to clarify. Uh, the officers have stated in uh, 6.12 that the footprint is over 60% of the existing dwelling. You've now caused a little bit of doubt in my mind as to what the existing dwelling was. Is it the house plus the boathouse? Or is it the house minus the boathouse? So the yeah the um, the figure of sixty percent that was provided to you by the the case officer is uh, in relation to the existing dwelling only. Um, in terms of the figures we've presented, uh, that also incorporated um, outbuildings that were present on the site. Um, but I think the the overall point, which which you know me, which me and Michael are in agreement with here, is that when considering the um, overall volume, uh, floor space, bulk and massing, in addition to just, just the full fl uh, footprint alone, um, that the, the dwelling is a proportionate replacement, and that's evident from the comparison plans that have been presented to you. Well, that's for this committee to decide, Chairman. Uh, can the officer confirm that, that uh, as well? It was the, the just the, just the, the, the uh, shall I call it, the, the domestic residence was the basis for the calculation? Yeah. Can I confirm this is a matter of um, technical disagreement between the officer and the applicant's agents? And we, sorry, sorry, Chair. Not at all. I, I couldn't sorry. hear you very clearly. I just turning around to see your microphone was on, Mr. Butler. Yeah, <laughs> but you. please proceed. I'll start again. It's a technical disagreement between the um, officer and the agent. Basically, uh, the planning authority, i.e., the officers, do not accept that the boathouse is in the bona fide residential curtilage of the dwelling, as I said. Certainly in the red line, because it needs to be conditioned, certainly in the ownership, but it is not um, curtilage. Now, the policy is quite clear in my view that uh, only buildings, and maybe Mr. Dre can help me here if necessary, only outbuildings within the bona fide residential curtilage can count towards the proportionality test and in this case clearly in our view it's outside so but notwithstanding that um whichever way you view it yourselves as the committee the point is that the proportionality uh in relation to the actual visual impact or the harm is acceptable in our view whatever figures you use okay. chairman if i may still, i still haven't got a clear answer was the 60% that you've got down in uh, 6.12, yeah. that 60% increase was just based on the dwelling, not any yeah. of the other unsilvery we, we, we are actually on questions to the presenter, uh, to, to Mr. Miller at the moment. I'm sorry, could I, Chairman. Could I just get you to come back on that when we question our officers? I appreciate perhaps. it, Chairman. Okay, fine. Okay. I don't think I got a clear answer. From I don't the think, well, perhaps either. you didn't, and perhaps Mr. Butler can work on a clear answer, which you can ask him before we enter debate. I just want a simple yes or no. Oh, we well, all get one, I'm sure. Councillor Mays. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Mr. Miller, I had some queries regarding the existing house, but what I really need to know is: is the existing property, the existing building, does that help support the road? Um, 
wall, which is presumably fairly deep. Can you answer that question for me? Um, I can't from a as from a sort of expert construction view. I'm, I'm, I don't know the answer to that question. But what we are proposing is that there'll be no change to that wall um, as part of the, the planning application. Thank you. That was it. Right. Uh, are there any other questions to the agents? No, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Councillor Law, uh, it is your turn next as ward member. Do you want to now ask Mr. Butler your question, please? A simple yes or no, hopefully. Yes, uh, yes thank you, Chairman. I hope this isn't part of my time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, it is the 60% increase that's, that you've highlighted in 6.12 based on just the, the, the dwelling rather than all the other ancillary bits and pieces that are around it? Mr. Butler. Just on the dwelling. Thank you. That's that's free. Thank you very much. That, 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 your time can now start now, Councillor. <laughs> you're getting me worried. You need all of your five minutes, clearly. Uh, no, no, so no, I will I, give you a minute to go, just yeah, in case I, you're still talking. I'll, I'll do my best. Jim. <laughs> my best. Okay. Um, yeah, yes, uh, members, I, I did call this in because, uh, as the officers agree, and I think it was from the site visit, people who know this, that area recognise it's a very, very sensitive area. And uh, I, I'll, I'll always recall uh, an old colleague, Dave Pearson, used to say it's the most sensitive. Of, it's the most sensitive part of West Berkshire, uh, and uh, if, if every every application along that river, from Beale Park to the Grotto to the Boathouse to the Grain Mode Street, they've all been committee decisions, uh, which is the reason I said if you're going to approve this, I want it to come to committee. Um, the main issues are clearly uh, the the size and proportionality. Uh, clearly, one officer looked at something similar uh, to, uh, a year ago, and uh, and thought it was disproportionate. The current case officer thinks it's proportionate, uh, and that's okay, Vic, because I think you'll see when I take you through some of the stuff. I'm sitting on a fence in this one as well. Um, the other issue, of course, is the visual impact, and this is where I do have a disagreement with the officer. He basically says uh, it, it it will not have a negative. It will not have a, a greater visual impact than the words that the officer used. It will have a greater visual impact. Whether you regard that as a positive or a negative visual impact uh, is, is to be decided. It's, it's one of these site visits, unfortunately, uh, a few members of the committee didn't make because I think you have to see, apart from the, the, the proportionality, which we can judge from drawings, uh, I think you have to see this from the river. Could I, could I ask... Uh, the, the very last photograph that uh, you had, could you bring that up on the screen, please? The very last photograph. Um, not, the, not the last plan, the, the actual photo. Keep going. No, the one after that, that one. Uh, th that's the view from the other side of the river. Uh, and uh, if you can picture slightly below that will be the, 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 the new property. You'll also see, if you look very closely at this, there's lots of tree stumps. And as the tree officer pointed out in 2018, uh, I quote the tree officer, he's noted a number of mature trees for being felled on the application site, presumably to make way for this application should it be approved. Uh, before 2018, when you walked along the Thames path, you actually couldn't see much of this house because there were quite a number of substantial trees there. And I noticed on the plans that once a number of trees are going to be replanted, they're not actually going to be replanted right in front of the house to shield the view for, of people from the Thames path. Uh, and therefore, there will be a, a rather different impact uh, with the new property. You know, you'll note the officer said on balance, and you also note the, uh, the, the Goring, Par uh, Goring Parish Council said no strong feelings one way or the other. Uh, something very similar from Basel, and they said yes, we have no objection. Uh, everywhere I go and I talk to people about this, I get, I don't like it or it's not too bad. Um, you've heard of CPRE, they have the opinion that uh, it's, it's, it's a negative visual impact. Um, I, I just hope the, the, off, the, the members who, who didn't quite make the site visit did get the chance to go and have a look at this. Uh, it's a very important decision simply because uh, it would it does have an influence on other applications in the area along the river. 
Uh, and we've currently got one pending at the moment. Uh, so I think it's very important. Me, I look at this, I wake up one morning and think marginally I'm, I'm against it. And the next morning I say, no, it's not really doing too much harm. Um, uh, I got to say, if, if on the proportionality side, Chairman, if it was a tad smaller, it would probably swing my vote. A minute to go. To it would probably swing my vote around to approval. So I'm very genuine when I say I'd love to hear the views of other members before I finally take a jump on the decision. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm sure you will, uh, Councillor Law. I'm going to bag Chairman's privilege. Oh, can you put that picture back up, please? Sorry, I'll just leave it there. Uh, I, I want to ask Councillor Law a question, then I will open it up to other questions. But as one, and, and Councillor Mays has seen this view because uh, unfortunately he didn't come to the top, but he got he was waiting for us at the bottom. Uh, and Councillor Macro, of course, you saw it. But Councillor Law, would you agree with me that, and we had the the comments and that it wasn't a debate, but the comments about trying to fathom out where the new building would sit in relation to this old one. Looking at this picture, uh, to the left-hand side of the main house, um, where there's a, looks like a black blob, which is like a terrace. Those one, two, three, four, about four or five windows there. Would you agree that the top of the roof of the proposed new dwelling sits just at the bottom edge of those windows? Yes, I would. You would? I Thank would. You. Right. Well, that, that's what we were looking at at the site. I'm just trying to help members who couldn't attend. The new proposed house is set lower. And, and, and the, yeah, that's a good one. And the ridge is, the ridge of the new proposed house is exactly where, where, you, where you indicated. So uh, I would agree with you. With that, thank you very much. Other members, do you have any questions for the board <coughs> member? Please indicate physically, because I can't necessarily see Zoom hands at the moment. Is there any? Right. Uh, officers, do you wish to add anything before I enter or ask members to start the debate? No, nothing, thanks, Chair. Right. Well, in that case, members, in, over to you. Well, do... Ah. You see, you are keeping me on the straight and narrow, aren't you? Members, before you go to debate, sorry, could you just indicate, do you have any questions for officers? Remiss of me, I apologise. That's, no, that's a no, you're asking to debate, aren't you? Yes. Any questions for officers? Councillor Sumner, is that a question for officers? It is, Chairman. It is. Oh, well, please ask it. <laughs> Gracious of you, Chairman. Oh. <laughs> um, I, I just, I'd like some clarity uh, uh, around the boathouse because to my mind along that stretch it, seemed, it would seem quite the norm to have a boathouse um and it seemed quite a shame to to have to remove it. it is that part of what we're saying has to be done has it been offered as something that can be done um and and if it's outside the curtilage do we have an opinion on it mr butler uh, yeah, well, first of all, we consider it's outside the curtilage, but it's in the red line, so it's in the control of the applicant and we can condition it. And it was certainly offered up by the applicant. Now, given it's um, a fairly dilapidated building in close proximity to the Thames, any, our view is any reduction in built space in that highly sensitive area is actually a visual benefit. So although it might be appropriate to the use, obviously, uh, we think, uh, and that's, it's in the application description and it's also within one of the conditions, I forget the number, that uh, it should be applied to any permission because there will be a, there will be a visual benefit basically. That's fine. Thank you, Jim. We're still questions to officers. I have Councillor Linden. And I was just going to add to the general debate. I didn't really want to. Uh, no, I, well, I got it wrong, Councillor Lyndon. I'm holding my hand up saying I did. I'm just taking questions for officers, then I'll come to you to start. Can the I debate. just ask a very quick question? You may, of course. So um, I know we're just looking at this application. Does this rule out in the future somebody putting a boathouse there? Can't, Mr. Butler, I'm sure you're going to give us the uh, answer we're all thinking of. No, it certainly doesn't. Uh, anyone can put in an application for a boathouse and we'll consider it on its merits. Yeah. Councillor Mays, is there a question for officers? 
Yes, Chairman. My question would be, have the officers investigated the structure of the wall and the um, terraced area behind the house, or in, actually I think it's in front of the house, um, that will be obvious when the existing house is removed? Is it stable from a saw mechanics and um, engineering point of view? I'm going to ask Mr. Dre to answer that one because, sorry, I'll, I'll ask. You can interject as well, Mr. Butler, in a minute. But Mr. Dre was, uh, uh, has an answer up his sleeve, I believe. Chairman, no, in the context of this planning application, that's not a material planning consideration. Um, that's probably a building regulations matter, if anything. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Butler, were you going to agree with that? Sorry. I was going to say the same, and also I'm to sure. add that um, because it'd be a retaining wall in relation to the highway, the highway's authority would retain control and it would be a civil matter anyway. Yeah. Okay, right. So not a planning matter. Right. See. Any other questions? Sorry, you have another question? No. No, right. Any other questions or shall I go to Councillor Linden to start the debate? Councillor Linden. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I've uh, looked at the, obligation, the application. Uh, but again, apologies, I couldn't attend the site physics all around. Um, I, my personal view is that this, I agree with the uh, the officer on this, uh, Mr. Butler, and uh, I'll be supporting this application. Thank you. Mr. S uh, Councillor Sumner. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I can absolutely understand why Councillor Law wakes up with a different view on this every day. Um, and what I've done is, is 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 use what was available to me to 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 go up and down the the uh, path of the river to 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 get different angles, different views, and 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 have a look at it. Now I had to do that through Google because I wasn't able to make make the site visit. But it 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 does occur to me, and the and the pictures illustrate it much better um, than I was able to. That that the alternative to the current is actually an improvement. I can totally understand that it would be imposing, but I think there's I think there's a trade-off. And I think actually what you gain is potentially more greenery above it, because it looks to me like you get more sight of the uh the the, the wood the other side of the road. Um uh, for my mind this this yeah it, it is an imbalanced decision but for my mind this actually is an improvement on on what's there now um and and certainly i know from from driving along that road it, it's always bit that bit that you reach where you go what is that roof um, <laughs> um to see that go i think would be an improvement from the other side as well if i'm honest thank, thank you, you very much councillor macro thank you mr chairman yeah you know, i, I uh, found this a bit difficult but basically we currently have a rather ugly kind of 1970s brick building with stone cladding at a on a very prominent at a very prominent position and the proposal to replace it with a much larger but much more attractive building at a lower uh, lower position and i think i'm coming down to in favor of officers recommendations mr show um I, the other aspect to this is the the access I didn't feel at all comfortable exiting from the, the site on the site visit because the visibility to the right is very poor. On the other hand, to improve that uh, visibility display would involve demolishing a very high, uh, very uh, very high wall. So uh, I can understand that that can't happen, but it's a bit of a disappointment, Mr. Chairman. Right, well, thank you. I, I see actually no other hands at the moment. Well, did, someone's just popped up. So I was going to make a, a, a comment myself, as, uh, as clearly I was there at the site visit. And whilst I concur, Councillor Macro, that access or views from the access uh, are, are not necessarily the best, uh, we were told very clearly that this is a replacement dwelling. It's adequate now. It's therefore adequate for the replacement, I believe. I'm looking for Mr Dowding to nod his head. Uh, he's nodding his head and agrees with me. Uh, and, and I have to say that I understand all the comments so far, 
I too can see exactly why this was called in. You have to be standing uh, when we parked our cars to, to admire that view in real life. The photographs do it reasonable justice, but to actually stand there, it, it, it's, it, yeah, it, it is one of, the, one of the best views in West, or from West Berkshire, out of West Berkshire, across the Goring Gap. Uh, I, and I have to say, I think what is proposed is very much an improvement it is set lower, as we saw, and that's what I questioned the ward member on after his presentation. And I find myself leaning more towards uh, supporting officers' recommendation than not. But Councillor Mays, you next, I believe. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. My only query really about is, is it practical to live in the old house while the new one is being built? There is an area where um, one wing would need to be removed before the other house could, the new house could be built. And I also wonder about the terms in the uh, um, officer's recommendations at the end of the document as to whether the work can be done while the owners are in residence. Perhaps you'd like to comment on that. Well, think Mr. About Mr. It. Butler, I mean, they don't have to live there, I guess, but could they? Could you answer that? Um, yes, with respect to the councillor's question, um, again, it's not a material planning consideration. Whether they live there or not is entirely their own choice, and it has no bearing at all on the planning merits of this case. Um, my view is, if what it's worth, you certainly wouldn't want to be living there because the um, <clears throat> the amount of works involved would certainly destabilize that dwelling unquestionably so i imagine they'd be living somewhere else but that that is not uh, a planning consideration okay thank you i'll go back to council law has just put his hand up then i will be looking for a recommendation council law yeah well i think i'm going to satisfy that oh, go uh, I, I think my my intent in bringing this to committee has been achieved and i've listened to the views of my colleagues uh, who I totally respect uh, to, to come up with sensible recommendations. So I would like to propose officer's recommendation. Well, I will we'll do an unusual thing and second that from the chair. As I spoke fairly positively about it. Well, sorry, I might take steal your thunder, councillors. On that. Uh, your prerogative, chair. Any more? Chairman. Any more debate? Any more questions? In that case, uh, we have a proposal for a, uh, officer's recommendation of approval, subject to the conditions. Uh, please show in front of the cameras. Those in favour, please show. That looks unanimous to me. Councillor Longton, perhaps. Oh, Councillor Council Longton, would you have agreed with us? I do apologise. I was going to look for any indicative vote from you. Okay. I think I would agree, Chairman. That's most kind. Thank you very much indeed. Right, members, uh, we have, I think, reached the end of the business for tonight. So there's, oh, Councillor Sommer, you wish to come back? Yeah, just, just one point that I should have raised with regards to the first application, Chairman, and it's just a note of caution and clarity around wording not affecting the decision in, in, in any way, shape or form, as far as I'm concerned. Um, page 39, number 12, say, states, no dwelling shall not be first occupied. And I think we've got a little too much negativity in that statement for its own good. So just for clarity, and just in case anything gets pulled up on it, it's yeah, number, number 12. Probably written by a Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it just, pro it just proves that members do dwell on words, and uh, I'm most grateful to you. I'm sure that will be gently amended because it doesn't change any, any part of our recommendation. Members, um, before we close, the, the next meeting is the 9th of February. Uh, sorry, the 16th of February, which would mean site visits on the 9th. We're still in the uh, time of dark evenings, unfortunately, which I know causes problems. But if you are able to attend at any time, uh, we are always welcome you. Um, some applications are, it is very necessary to, to, to view, as we heard on, on the last one we just debated. Uh, but I do, it as I say, I accept fully that there are work commitments and other commitments, and it can be tricky. Let's hope we can move to summertime soon and return to evening, which makes life easier. Uh, and fewer fire authority training sessions. But members, with that, I, I, I thank you for your attendance, your contributions, and close the meeting and wish you all good night. Please just remain for the moment.